my research with uh, a, deep, a real serious dilemma and contradiction. My research subject is really interesting and fascinating. But what is fascinating is also uh, open dangers in another aspect. I was asked to talk about artificial intelligence today. I asked you one idea that I'd like to talk about not only what is the AI, but also what I think about AI with sincerity. Definitely, this issue will be more and more important and serious in the future. So uh, I'm very happy if I can give you a trigger to think about that at this time. So of course, I will talk about the white the AI and why is it getting uh, so much attention now. It is very easy for you to classify each of them into a cat or dog. So that if you have to write down, how did you make different? So it suddenly becomes a very difficult task. So please now find the appropriate criteria of this classification for several seconds. So, if you think that the dog has a complex shape of nose, so you have to say, this is a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are uh, many other uh, criteria uh, that, would able, that would be able to classify this park picture into a dog category. But probably it is difficult to classify all of these pictures correctly. Why? We can classify them so easily, but why we cannot know how to do that? That is because what we are doing is what our brain is doing. Our brains are very massively parallel and very flexible system. And it is said that a hundred billions of neurons are working in parallel in our brain. On the other hand, when we write down something or uh, speak something, we use a word and symbols. So it should be sequential. So, due to the deep difference between a, a parallel and a sequential, and so we cannot de describe what we are doing in our brain. So the researchers have divided the further system into several parts. We call this a functional model. For example, recognition, planning, control, and memory, and so on. and they try to understand the function of each module. And the researchers have also tried to uh, develop a human-like intelligent robot by giving their knowledge into the each module. And this recognition module is further divided like this. Uh, here is the input image. And through the pre-processing, image segmentation, and feature extraction, and classification, and then finally, it can say, uh, this is a cat. The researcher try to give it more and more knowledge. And that means uh, uh, sometimes uh, they try to prepare uh, more uh, useful features like this. And so the recognition rate has increased. But actually, it has been saturated and did not reach the human level. So the deep learning has appeared. 
It is a central technique in uh, present AI. And it is uh, just a much real neural network. In other words, in other words uh, the very simple model of a brain. So it employs, uh, it can do the both parallel processing and learning. And it employs a, a special structure for shift and scale invariance. And the GPU, that stands for the graphical processing unit, has a strong power of parallel computing. And uh, uh, it enables the computation of a large scale neural network. And true learning, so useful features uh, emerge from the lower level to more uh, abstract, higher level. After learning, uh, these pictures, for example, uh, could be classified into one of the 1,000 categories. So this is uh, uh, motor scooters, and this one uh, is, can be classified into a leopard, not a jaguar, and so on. So, but it is not enough to realize a human-like intelligence. When you take a look at this picture, what do you recognize? You are not going to only classify this picture to the cat categories, but you think uh, many things. For example, uh, the cats hate coldness, and they have gathered into, uh, in front of these heaters. And they don't uh, seem to notice me. They will not give me away easily. So we can recognize and think so many things from this one picture. In the real world, we face in numerous situations. And so it is very difficult to decide what should be the output of this recognition module. What is the origin of this problem? To understand the brain, the researchers divided it into modules, the system into modules. And they try to understand and develop the each module. But to do them, its input and output should be decided at first. And to decide them, they have to, they have to understand the brain. So this is a kind of a chicken and egg problem. So as you can see that the important thing is uh, without division into modules. So for the process from the uh, sensor to motors, uh, it can be run at the same time. And the internal representation, we don't need to prepare in advance, but they emerge through learning. One more thing that is necessary to realize a human-like intelligence is a learning without a teacher. This rat can run to push a river to get first when the green light turns on. Uh, even though it didn't get any, any direction from the outside, but it can learn by itself. So the rainforest learning has appeared. So it is a learning from the reward and punishment through trials and errors. It enables the autonomous learning without the teacher. So finally, we have reached end-to-end -end reinforced learning using a neural network. <laughs> so for the system from the sensor to motors, it's consisted of one neural network. And using the motion and perception loop, the reinforced learning is applied. And through learning, necessary functions emerge without any directions. So I have been persisting in this framework for around 20 years so far, um, but unfortunately, uh, no one has cared about that. So now the uh, Google uh, DeepMind 
maybe you know, uh, begin to advocate the advantage of this approach. And thanks to their impressive demonstration, this uh, framework uh, begin, uh, is getting a, a lot of attention now. So I will show you two demonstration videos. The first one is what we did in 2008, uh, named the Kissing Eye Task. Here is an eyeball a robot. It has a camera attached to its nose. And they, it moves around, and when it kisses the other eyeball, so it can get a reward. The camera image is the input of the neural network, and the eyeball moves according to the output of the neural network. So after 4,000 trials warning, it finally approached eyeball, approach and kissed the other eyeball. Even though the successful ratio uh, did not reach 100%, actually uh, around 90%. But before warning, the eyeball didn't know how to recognize the other eyeball and how to act to approach the other eyeball. And also, it didn't know it should approach to kiss the other eyeball. So, but it could run by itself. So this is a demonstration by Google DeepMind. So it runs uh, to play the game breakout. So as you can see, that first it can, it couldn't receive the ball. And in this case, uh, this uh, image is also the input of the neural network. And uh, the bubble moves according to the output of the uh, neural network. So now the, it can, it could receive the ball. And the game score is used as a reward. And after 600 trials running, so they can, it can, it could get a very nice strategy like this. No one uh, teach a system. It could run by itself. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a surprising news. The last year, uh, AlphaGo, that was developed also Google in mind. Uh, it won a professional human Go player. Go is a really complicated game. And it, was, it has been said that the artificial intelligence would never win the Go player. So, uh, summary of the first part is that if you expect a birth of intelligence, so don't interrupt a couple. It was running a neural network. So leave it to autonomous learning. So intelligence emerge, uh, as a, <coughs> emerge as a fruit of autonomous learning. Okay. In the second part, let me talk what I think about AI and modern science. So free from the fear of salvation is very, very important for humans. And it brings us uh, so much happiness in such situation. However, if a salesman were a robot instead of a person, so how much happiness uh, could you get? So the benefit of science has increased as the progress of science. But comparing with the passage, the increase, uh, it is not, uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, it is difficult to expect a large increase in happiness. So to get more happiness, a far more growth is expected. That means uh, self-replicating technologies is demanded. Nuclear technology, biotechnology, learning are all self-replicating technology. They have a great potential because it grows exponentially like this curve. 
but it is very difficult to predict the outcome and also it is very difficult to control them. Especially learning has the potential to enable the robots to think by themselves. So the risk increases as a progress of science and there is a critical point. So I think that it's a time to weigh up the benefits and risks of science and technologies. I'm afraid that the critical point has passed already. Who should make the decision? Even researchers cannot predict the outcome, and they don't want to deny their research. And 2045 will come suddenly. And it's a human hubris to say that it can be controlled or can be used only for benefits. And also, the capitalism prioritized the short-term profits over the anxiety of our human future, uh, futures. Anyway, I really hate that uh, such situation. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, unmanned air planes or the robots think by themselves with smart AI and uh, they are wandering around me. But the present AI is not so powerful yet and they will not be able to think by themselves in 10 years, I think. But it comes suddenly and once it occurs, it may not be able to be stopped easily. But now we can. So on the other hand, DeepMind said on their homepage that soul of intelligence, use it to make the world a better place. So how do you want to make our future? So thank you for your attention and for being toy. <laughs> so uh, I'm